Um, my name is Niels Fietje. Um, I work in the uh, WHO European Regional Office for uh, Europe, which is, uh, as, as Rasmus was saying, in, in Copenhagen. Um, and we recently, well, not that recently anymore, before um, Corona in any case, it seems like a, um, a long time ago now. In 2019, we launched a report on the evidence base um, that supports arts and health interventions. So it, it was a scoping review. It, it looked at all the evidence out there on a, on a range of, uh, of uh, arts and health interventions. Um, and it um, showed WHO, and I, and I think a lot of other people who might have been a little bit skeptical, that there is a huge amount of evidence base out there for lots of arts and health interventions. Now, that's not to say every single arts and health intervention is, uh, is effective. And in fact, there are many um, that lack very good um, evidence, but there are certainly many as well that have very strong evidence behind them. And um, here at WHO, we are now in the process of taking one of those uh, um, interventions. It's a uh, singing for um, mothers with uh, postnatal depression. Um, we're in the, in the process of taking one of these interventions and rolling it out in two countries, in Den Denmark and in Romania, to learn from the process of how do you actually implement these, uh, these interventions. In Denmark, there is already an infrastructure for arts and health uh, um, in, in the central Denmark region where, where we're working. There's a, um, a very good base and a very good buy-in by both the, the medical systems and uh, um, the populations, the, the, the people who, who will be using it. But in Romania, it's still a relatively new concept. And uh, in, in the city of Cluj, where we'll be um, um, running the intervention, I think we've got a lot to learn about how do you bring this type of intervention into, um, into the, the healthcare system. So um, I won't spend um, a lot more time. It, just, just to say that um, I'm, I'm really, I'm always very pleased to see the enthusiasm for these kinds of uh, um, activities. I'm, I'm really interested to hear about the case stories that are going to be presented today. Um, mental health is an area where arts Arts and health kind of was pioneered in many ways. In, in, in many ways, it's kind of the uh, um, um, ground zero for for arts and health interventions. Um, and uh, uh, some of the best evidence for for health interventions comes from the mental health field. So I'm really looking forward to to the presentations. Um, very very glad to to be here. Very glad to see all the people um, who've joined with the uh, with the enthusiasm for arts and health. Um, if it's the first time that you're hearing about this, I do recommend that you um, have a look um, at the report that we published. It's a, it's a rather long report, but there's also a, a summary which you can, uh, you can download and, and it's available on our uh, WHO Euro website and it's called What is the Evidence on the Role of Arts in Improving Health and Wellbeing? And I'll, I'll copy a, um, a link to uh, the, the report in the, in the chat. So that's it from me. Um, thanks again for the invitation and I'm very much looking forward to listening into the rest of the uh, webinar. Over to you, Rasmus. Thank you, Niels. Thank you. Um, it is true that this report has a lot of great cases. I have to turn off the microphone here. And, um, and uh, I can recommend all of you to look into it. It's not only mental health, it's, uh, uh, it's all kinds of... Uh, uh, things that we face as human beings uh, that uh, that art can uh, that can help with. So uh, look into that report that uh, you will you will post. It. There we go. We have the the link to that report. It came in November uh, twenty nineteen, and then we've been trying here in twenty twenty to tell the good story. Uh, so thank you, Nils, and uh, thank you for then holding the torch up for uh, uh, arts and health. Um, then I would like to invite uh, David Cutler from the Bering Foundation. He's the director at the Bering Foundation. And I found uh, uh, some, some comments you had made uh, on uh, 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 some first impressions on arts and mental health activity in the UK, where you list uh, some, some 10, different, um, 10 different issues uh, facing this, that it's complex and hybrid and if you're working in this field, it feels like a vocation. I'm sure Anne-Marie and, 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 and Kazi can, uh, can tell about that, uh, that it's a very uh, low profile, etc. So, but uh, David, tell us, why is the Bering Foundation focusing on arts and mental health? I know you have three different strands, but uh, why have you d dived into this area? Thanks uh, very much. Mm -hmm. um, nice to be with you. I think any webinar where I've remembered to unmute is already a triumph. So I'm sitting quietly uh, delighted with myself. 
the, the bearing plan, the, the short answer to your um, uh, question is that we think that, and it's an important answer, I think, is that we're a human rights funder. And we believe that creativity and culture is a human right. So we do accept, um, as Niels has just outlined very brilliantly, um, that there's other benefits for participation in uh, creativity. But fundamentally for us, it's about the right to be creative. I read um, the, the uh, WHO report a couple of years ago with great interest. And I think a, an important issue for us is that our new fund is about creativity with people, including children and young people, um, with mental health problems. So we don't have, because as a small funder, we feel that we can't do um, uh, the whole waterfront, everything regarding uh, creativity and mental health. And the re it, it may sound slightly strange after Niels's comment, but my reading of that report is there's much stronger evidence about the well-being and preventative effects of creativity for the whole population, rather than people with mental specified uh, diagnosed mental health problems. Um, and I know there's new work such as the work with singing, uh, singing with uh, mums and melodies, we call it in, uh, in the UK. So there's lots of new work, but in a way, we think regardless of what you think about um, uh, creativity as medicine, we think creativity is a right anyway. And if I've just got a couple of moments, I'll just say a few things about what we've done uh, in uh, the UK as briefly as I can. We look at things as a funder of arts organizations. So we're going into this as from the perspective of arts organizations. And we're particularly interested in arts organizations that probably very familiar to all of you. We call it participatory or community arts, where a trained artist is working with people who haven't had that training, but um, around uh, unleashing their creativity, helping their creativity through co-production or co-creation. So everything that we do is framed like that. And uh, last year we launched a 10 year program on uh, called Creatively Minded, starting off with the mapping report that you've referred to um, about what's happening in the UK. And when we started off, people said, um, oh, it's a good thing for the Bering Foundation to be doing, there's not much happening. And then when we started to look, there was an immense amount happening. And I think one of the reasons why people weren't always aware of that is that we found in general, and it applies to arts organizations working with children and young people, they tend to be very small, very underfunded, very local. They're just doing the job on a shoestring and they don't have time or resources for uh, lots of publicity or for or research. What we've um, been doing is we gave uh, almost 100 grants last year and um, to specialist arts organisations working with people with mental health problems. And over half of those had budgets under £100,000 per year and a third um, uh, under 30000 So uh, to do the conversion, that's roughly one full-time employee. So very small. Um, we're doing a whole series of, um, uh, of reports. I think you've kindly given a link to a directory that gives 250 organizations, which is an underestimate, arts organizations in the UK working uh, on arts and uh, uh, creativity with people with mental health problems. And it identifies specifically the smaller number that are working particularly with children and young people. And to move on just for a couple of minutes about children and young people, um, not a happy position in the UK, quite literally, that um, in 2015, our Children's Society brought out a report saying that children in England are some of the unhappiest by a number of measures um, uh, in Europe and indeed in the world, in developed countries. 
Uh, unhappy is not the same as uh, a mental health problem, I understand, but it's not a good sign, is it? We have in the last 10 years had um, our youth services very much underfunded and uh, resources declining. And the specific uh, services for children and young people with mental health problems over here, they're called CAMs. They are particularly criticized as being especially underfunded in comparison to other areas of mental health, which in itself is underfunded. Very hard, as you probably know, to get um, good statistics about children and young people and mental health, but the NHS estimate in England, one in eight uh, uh, children having a mental health problem in England, as defined by the NHS, and that rate having doubled in 10 years. So lots of mental health statistics are very mm -hmm. unclear, but this is one where there's a very steep rise. I think I don't have much longer, so, um, and you've got so, such great speakers. What I'd like you to invite you to do uh, is to have a look at our publication on our website, which is called Creatively Minded and Young. That's uh, 19 case studies uh, of arts organizations in the UK, particularly working with uh, young people and children with mental health problems. Um, I'd like there to leave... Two questions. Uh, yes, please do. Two questions. Thank you, David. Just two questions okay. for you. Uh, one is, did I hear you said that uh, it's more the general public that can benefit from uh, uh, the arts and creativity on, on health in general and on mental health. So it's more like a vitamin pill rather than uh, it should be seen as a, a medication uh, for an, an illness. Or... Well, what, what, um, uh, obviously, I'm going to defer to, to Niels as the expert. I think those studies have um, very good evidence about the general effects <laughs> on the population. Uh, and well-being and it's really strong evidence that participation in culture and also personal creativity is good for your well-being and for your general mental health you also we mentioned in your, in your comments to the problems. in your comments to the mapping you also mentioned that research is lacking uh, you said statistics before but it's also a matter of uh, finding causality and making sure that uh, yeah you have some evidence on that it works so please listen to Niels, who's, a, who's the expert. But I think there's relatively few studies about exactly this. Um, people with mental health problems, diagnosed mental health problems, that's especially true about children and young people with diagnosed mental health problems, and the impact of what we would call creativity participatory arts. In the UK, and I'm sure elsewhere, we have a separate field called arts therapy, which is clinically driven, where there are, I think, more studies. But um, I'm in the presence Thanks. of an expert and uh, always- Maybe I can, yes. maybe uh, Russell, I can just say a couple of words about this. Um, and um, and that's, I, I actually really um, agree on many levels with, uh, with David. I think the, um, a lot of the evidence is, is on the kind of, uh, um, participatory arts and uh, uh, culture and participation um, level. But I guess where, where I would um, hone in on and where a lot of the focus uh, um, of our work is, is that there are definitely a handful of, uh, um, of studies, some of which are, uh, sorry, interventions, some of which are in the mental health field, like the Melody for Moms, uh, um, one that, that, that Dave was were talking about, that don't just have uh, um, good evidence behind them, but that are also being um, tested at scale. So this is this is the other kind of interesting question. Not just is there clinical ev evidence? Is there what what some might call hard evidence from um, RCTs, etc.? Is is that available? And there are certainly some interventions for mental health uh, um, challenges like postnatal depression where the evidence is there. But there's also we're also beginning to see evidence that these uh, these types of interventions can be rolled out at scale across countries to to many people, not not just in in kind of um, small scale um, communities. So that that side of thing is it, things is, is definitely um, and, a growing field. But and I think we will uh, we will continuously post. Uh, sorry, Niels, we will continuously post uh, these reports and studies uh, on the in the network that we have, and and especially in the group around uh, arts and mental health. 
uh, if you go to this is uh, cbnet.com here we have lots of groups on different topics and one on on arts and health so uh, uh, thank you, David, uh, for 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 uh, explaining what you're doing with the Bering Foundation and in the UK. And now um, we're going to do like a Google Earth. Uh, you know, when you suddenly type in and you suddenly travel around the world, uh, we're going to go to Maui, uh, Hawaii, the state of Hawaii. It's an, uh, the fiftieth state in the US, uh, with some covering some two hundred islands, I believe. Uh, with a group of some main islands. Uh, one of them is, is, is Maui, and there we have Anne-Marie Forsyth, and you are the executive director of the, of the HUI, as you usually uh, call it, the HUI Visual Arts Center. And you caught our attention because we read uh, an, uh, an article about how you've been helping kids in shelters with uh, an art intervention. But uh, So Anne-Marie, uh, welcome to the Zoom, and maybe you could just uh, just tell us a bit about what the HUI is doing, uh, uh, what, you, what, what is the Visual Arts Center, uh, the HUI, and also um, so what, what, what kind of intervention was it? Okay, um, aloha again, and thank you so much for having me this evening here, your morning. Um, HUI No Al is the full name of our organization, and um, it means people coming together for a common purpose and we are a community arts organization and we offer um, core art classes, visual art classes, as well as our outreach programs. So um, what you mentioned Rasmus specifically is uh, during this last year of the COVID period, we have partnered with many other organizations and one being our homeless shelters here on the island of Maui. And um, what we have done was create a virtual program and bring bringing art kits and activities to the children in, in the homeless shelters and um, bringing joy and life to them. We've been really isolated. The children, especially schools, have been shut down uh, for over a year now. They're just starting to slowly open up again. So there's been very little interaction um, between children and um, in the schools. So we really felt it was important that we were able to engage with them, knowing how important the arts are for, for everyone's mental health, but specifically those who are most in need and those you know, being those children in the homeless shelters, but we do also reach uh, children in our public school systems, uh, foster care children as well, but it's all offered free. We're a nonprofit. So, of course, um, our programming depends on funding that we can raise and the grants that we can write. But it's been really so rewarding to be working with these other organizations and we've um, been the where we are is a historic property that was and the home was built in 1917 in rural upcountry Maui. So we're kind of isolated and normally we would bring kids to the Hui, but because of the pandemic, we had to pivot and change entirely our way of looking at the arts and engaging in our community. And we didn't want the pandemic to stop us from be, being important to the community. And so we, um, we pivoted and we went virtual and we brought free art supplies and art kits and it's been very very wonderful experience for us at the hui for our donors and for the children of course as well so it's so it's for kids in homeless shelters so it's kids that are actually homeless uh, yes. with their with their parents and then it's for kids in public schools uh, every every child in a public school or only certain well we initially we were going into just certain public schools that we have built a relationship with but during the pandemic we were able to open up to any really any child in our community who who wanted an art kit who wanted to create uh we we provided that to them free of charge and actually during this time our outreach has grown and it's it's pretty amazing um how many children we were able to reach and it goes, Maui County covers more than just Maui. It's also the island of Molokai and the Nai'i. So we were also getting to the children on these outer islands as well. So uh, so David mentioned before the shoestring, and uh, you already hinted at that, that it really is uh, uh, something extraordinary that required extraordinary funding. And you did find some from the Hawaii Community, Fo Community Foundation, I believe. 
Yes, we have. They've been so helpful in connecting us with funders. And, um, you know, without that support, we wouldn't be able to do the work that we're doing. So, but you're saying, so it's, it's actually a kit that you send to them. So they actually receive something that's tangible uh, yeah. in the mail yeah. or somehow. And then but uh, we, we, we will deliver it to them. We'll deliver it to them. We did have just a general drive through that they could come up and pick up art kits. But for the homeless shelter, for instance, we do uh, weekly deliveries to them with art activities. And in that and is then, a lesson. And that is also an online program, right? Yes. And so uh, there's an online program. So they could have a facilitator, a facilitator, a program coordinator, or a class teacher that could be with them, or they could be doing it with their mom and dad or by themselves because they can follow virtually online. And um, with, within that, we teach. Um, you know, the, we say STEAM, I know a lot of people refer to it as STEM, but of course we stick the A in there for STEAM. And, you know, we teach science, technology, mathematics, and um, through the arts. And so all of our lessons incorporate some sort of uh, academic, you know, component to it or a cultural, um, a Hawaiian cultural art form that they learn as well. So we like to cross, cross. it's not just creating you know, something fun, which is lovely to do, but we like to put something a little bit behind it as well. So, so actually also kids uh, outside the, the outside Maui County and outside Hawaii will be able to. Yes, I mean, it, it would, it could be internationally if people logged on to our website and participated and it's again, all free and, and many of our projects that are virtual, if we don't have an actual kit to give, they're items that you can most likely find in your home, you know, maybe some tape or a toilet, old toilet paper roll or something like that, that we've created a project around. Excellent. Thank you, Anne-Marie. You might want to type the, the website of the Hui uh, in the chat so people can uh, log on and see. Um, before I give the word to uh, Kadri, or I should say Mahalo, Anne-Marie. Um, Hello. Uh, <laughs> so uh, before I give the word to, to, to Kadri, I just want to say we also have Ken Arnold with us. Uh, Ken Arnold uh, is also someone who knows a lot about this issue working uh, with the, or for the Welcome Group and also uh, here in Copenhagen uh, working for the Medical Museum and the, the Copenhagen University and Ken, uh, I'll uh, I'll ask you to to join us uh, maybe after Kadri's presentation with uh, some some bright questions, uh, and also Ken is also helping us uh, setting up the next uh, session that we'll have end of June as I mentioned in the beginning. So uh, good to see you here, Ken. I I heard you had a few problems with your with your PC, but it seems like it's working now. Um, excellent. Uh, Kadri Hayas. So now we're moving from something that's um, uh, very tangible uh, and uh, local to uh, something that's quite digital. And I, you, you took away all the prejudices I had when we spoke on Friday about if it's digital, then it's usually packed in certain formats, and then you can't really be creative um, uh, in those. But you, um, you, you actually made me believe uh, otherwise. But Kadri, if you want to unmute and uh, just tell us a little bit about your background and about Triumph Health that you've been working on for five years, I believe, so far. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, so, um, yes, my name is Kadri and, and actually by background, I'm a psychologist and, and I do have a PhD in health psychology as well. Uh, but now for the past five years, we have been trying to, to take uh, one step forward from those face-to-face -face uh, visits, what you can do with uh, psychologists um, and scale psychological support a little bit. Uh, and uh, uh, I actually have background in creative interventions uh, myself, or I, I really very strongly believe in those. And um, But what is, again, a little bit of a problem is to scale uh, those interventions beyond local communities. These usually require a lot of funding, and if you combine this very underfunded area of mental health with arts and creativity, that is another similar underfunded area, then uh, it's quite tough. Uh, but uh, at the same time, those interventions are very important. 
what we have been doing at Triumph Health for the past five years is that we deliver psychological support to children through a game environment. So actually we provide this very playful experience to children uh, because it, it's a very safe and intuitive environment for them. But what is very important here is that we only don't have those therapeutic dialogues in the, in the uh, solution. We very strongly encourage this exploratory behavior. It's very similar process to, to, to the creative uh, um, kind of experiences and outputs as well to, to really explore and, and learn more and, and be very like eager to, to see what comes out. So game environment also uh, allows this to happen. And also we use uh, in, the, in the game uh, various creative uh, solutions. So uh, for example, we have uh, this coloring book option that you can do digitally as well. You don't have to have a physical uh, physical paper and pens, but you can actually complete this task and stay focused and be very mindful uh, in a digital medium as well. And uh, we are now active in various countries and we have been showing, um, uh, we have conducted loads of research because actually I have academic background, so we have completely randomized control studies and, and um, and intervention uh, studies in general population and with ill children. So we do know that this is this is a uh, this is an approach that improves children's well-being and quality of life as well. So very promising uh, way to deliver support to combine arts, creativity, and playfulness and deliver support to children because it needs to be whatever we are doing for children. Uh, it needs to be delivered in a way that they actually enjoy, right? Because children are very critical. And if you force something on them, then they don't want to use it. They just want to, to use something that is extremely fun and make them very happy. So game, uh, game environment uh, truly offers this uh, opportunity for us. Isn't it also very language specific uh, what you do? So uh, for children, uh, both the, how you know, the language develops a lot in those, in those years. And also you can't just give them something in English or let alone Estonian. So, uh, so, it, so for scaling, it must be quite a challenge for you. After all, you say it is, it's an opportunity, but still, in how many countries are you are you are you active or present right now? Uh, well, we have been active from Guatemala to Singapore. Uh, at the moment, wow. we are in uh, in the Nordics. We are in in Sweden, in Finland, and in Estonia. Um, and uh, from the scalability perspective, I mean, if, uh, if the underlying algorithms work, we just need to understand that uh, this is like based on the, uh, based on some steps and there is an underlying path, uh, what children are uh, experiencing in the game and everything is dependent on, on their own strengths and difficulties. But the language part is not that tricky because it's just a matter of uh, translating it to various languages. Mm. Uh, there is, of course, a lot of text, but it doesn't, uh, the language does not change the underlying algorithm because we spent the first year in uh, involving children from various cultures to the actual solution development process because we were a team of psychologists and we did not know that we will start delivering support through such creative uh, medium uh, we uh, that that uh, was developed together with children and not only for, from a couple of countries but really uh, from various cultural backgrounds to make sure that it's actually applicable uh, independent of where the child lives so we know that uh, whether whether it's Singapore or Guatemala that we can still support children through that environment and and who are your who are your clients is it parents or that download something or is it the public sector and uh, um... Uh, so, so, so they are the ones that, uh, or actually, who, who, how can you get it? Uh, well, these are uh, pretty much uh, either local uh, municipalities or governments or schools uh, or hospitals. So we, um, it is like a easily downloadable solution, of course, but we took this ethical decision from the very beginning that this support should not be charged uh, or the end user should not be charged even though parents, they would like to give their all to, to make sure that their children are doing well. But, uh, but it should be, in, in order to scale such solutions, it needs to be kind of like a free public 
uh, service that there is a lot of uh, different solutions and and the users are um, free to choose whatever approach they like because we cannot force just one solution to people there need to be so many different ones and once these are free uh, public services then um, it, it creates this uh, fruitful environment to uh, to test out and and try various solutions and find the one that is the, the best for, for the has there been an increased demand here during uh, 2020 has, have, or has it actually dropped because there is need to uh, there is nice to have and need to have and uh, some somehow often as we have heard uh, creativity arts and mental health uh, fall into the category of well should we just give them some pills uh sure uh 2020 was definitely a year of uh, of very few um articles about uh, how this uh, overall crisis is going to impact mental health and not much funding was given to mental health uh, services and, and different uh, interventions because that was clearly seen as nice to have uh, um, um, intervention and every all the governments and everyone were having their focus on on just uh, getting the disease or the, the virus under control but now 2021 i think that this is the year for mental health because uh, we are really getting from awareness to action uh, we we are seeing that everyone understands that we are struggling uh, everyone is struggling more or less after this uh, one and a half years of um, uh, of pandemic and nobody was prepared even for the first two weeks that we thought that the, we will get the two week of uh, lockdown and then everyone uh, then we will be fine but now one and a half years later uh, the the burden on our mental health is immense and we need uh, a lot of different interventions to uh, for early interventions just for like prevent uh, prevention but also for actual interventions uh, for for those who are already in uh, in need and who are uh, experiencing mental health uh, disorders Aita uh, Kadri uh, uh, I was made aware of, of Triumph Health and, and Kadri Hayas who are national partner of Estonia uh, Creative Estonia and we have partners in some 80 countries so we often often ask around and then they we get some excellent uh, context. Thanks. So thanks, Kadi. And now, um, just to let you know, we have about uh, 20 minutes left, and we there's also the opportunity for you guys to ask questions. So if you have questions, please uh, write them in the in the chat, and we will uh, call you out. We still have um, uh, two speakers, more or less, or not. We have one speaker left, but we also have uh, Ken Arnold uh, joining us, uh, and maybe Ken, uh, we should let. Uh, uh, Peter Udlengo from uh, the municipality of Aarhus just quickly tell us what he's been doing and then you can help me wrap it up uh, at the end and, and point uh, towards the, uh, the, the future uh, in this field. So uh, Peter uh, Udlengo, you are the chairman of the, the health uh, uh, committee in the city of Aarhus and um, I know that uh, we heard before Niels mentioned uh, uh, the region, the mid region, the middle region in Denmark. It sounds almost like Middle Earth, uh, but it, so region mid has done a lot in this field uh, of, of creativity, arts and health. But also the city that's placed in region mid, Aarhus, the second biggest city of Denmark, have had this collaboration between uh, the, the, uh, the arts uh, department and the arts uh, committee and the health committee. But could you tell us a bit more about that? I see we have a PowerPoint coming up here. So, Peter, Peter, the Zoom is yours. Thank you, and, and, and thank you for the, uh, the invite. Uh, uh, I think I would uh, like to start to give some uh, overall perspective uh, because uh, actually the idea of using uh, art and music uh, in a context of uh, mental health is actually very old. If you look at the classical Indian tradition with raga music that dates 5,000 years back, the raga music it was a way of using music to stimulate the mental health of the target of the music. So the idea is new, but the new thing is if you look in the last decade, is how it is rising on the political agenda. 
Uh, and if I should put some words on uh, why it's uh, rising uh, on a political agenda, uh, you can uh, put it like, uh, uh, how to say that, uh, um, the cultural uh, and creativity uh, industry have had the, uh, uh, the problem of uh, uh, legitimize uh, public uh, spencer uh, in regard of uh, uh, why should uh, the public use uh, uh, public spending uh, on uh, creativity, culture and arts, uh, etc. Uh, and one of uh, the reasons that uh, in a political content um, we are uh, uh, working with uh, creativity and, uh, and mental health uh, is that it's a reason to, um, and uh, a way to legitimize uh, using public uh, spending in the area of creativity. If you look upon uh, uh, the voters uh, in the Danish context, uh, uh, then, uh, when you ask the voters, uh, uh, almost everybody says that we use uh, too uh, many money uh, on on culture and creativity. Uh, and uh, in a Danish context, uh, we started uh, uh, serving uh, uh, voters' uh, agendas back in 1972, uh, and the two areas uh, within public spending that is the most unpopular uh, since 1972 is the cultural area uh, and then uh, the uh, defense uh, department. Uh, so uh, the you, idea you might of- to change uh, your slide if, in, in case you are, uh, yeah. have moved. I know sometimes in a Zoom, you forget that you have a, you have a, a presentation. So I don't know yeah. if you should uh, have another- uh, Thank you, Rasmus. Uh, and, and also we, we only have 14 minutes left. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm I'm a politician, so so I'm used to just talk and talk and talk. Here, but <laughs> uh, I will try to keep it uh, briefly. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, the idea of uh, using culture uh, in a health setting uh, is uh, a way of uh, legitimizing uh, public spending uh, in the area of uh, of culture, uh, and uh, that was one of the uh, political uh, logics behind. Uh, making uh, a cultural and, and health plan uh, in all the, the other idea was that uh, when uh, uh, the cultural uh, institutions and uh, area uh, by themselves started working with uh, this uh, agenda uh, uh, then, uh, in, a, in a public uh, setting, uh, we can see that uh, it's uh, actually a really, really uh, efficient way uh, of working with uh, healthcare uh, and mental uh, healthcare. Uh, the idea of using culture as a way of uh, uh, making positive uh, communities uh, uh, had uh, a quite great impact uh, on uh, mental uh, healthcare, both uh, in the setting of uh, the ill, uh, area, but also among uh, uh, youngsters, uh, children with uh, autism, uh, uh, lonely uh, children uh, and uh, citizens with uh, mental vulnerability. Uh, so, so we well, are can, trying... So can you say do you have a, a greater impact or are you spending less money, which would probably be nice for a, for a, for a city, but um, what have been some of the... Has the impact been... Have you been able to already measure some of the... Um, the impact of, of this new of this policy? Uh, no, no, we <coughs> we haven't been able to to, to measure the impact uh, yet, uh, but uh, we are uh, evaluating uh, some of the initiative uh, uh, on on uh, the way. But one of the idea behind behind the plan was also to. Uh, uh, to try uh, new methods and new ways to work uh, in, in the crossover area between uh, uh, children, young people and, uh, and mental health. Uh, uh, we have some project that we've been doing for uh, a lot of years uh, that uh, is well known. Uh, but the, the, the new thing in the uh, strategy of uh, uh, healthcare and, and culture is to try out uh, new ways of working uh, in this uh, these areas. As a, so we're doing a, 
in other words, uh, a lot of tests uh, in the areas uh, in in the moment. Uh, and, and the idea is to uh, continue working with uh, uh, the projects that uh, we can see have uh, uh, an, an in impact uh, in uh, the target groups uh, uh, and help uh, increase uh, self-esteem and uh, develop uh, uh, yeah, the target groups. Uh, uh, capacities, uh, etc. So, but but we're doing uh, a lot of different uh, project. Uh, uh, we have uh, a project with uh, the symphonic uh, orchestra in, in Aarhus, uh, where uh, we both have uh, families uh, with children investigating uh, music and using that uh, as a way uh, to uh, uh, both uh, making. Uh, uh, bridging between the children uh, and making new friendships uh, uh, across uh, uh, ages, uh, but, but also uh, uh, making a stronger uh, uh, community between the parents of uh, uh, the children uh, and uh, uh, the school, uh, etc. Uh, then, then we had the uh, uh, extraordinary uh, committee meeting uh, about uh, challenges and uh, and also uh, what we learned uh, during the corona uh, lockdown. Uh, and we also invited uh, citizens and experts, uh, etc. Uh, and, and the main point uh, and conclusion of uh, the discussion was that uh, 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 the goal of uh, the strategy when we are going to open up uh, again is to restart the communities. Uh, an intersection between uh, the target groups. Uh, and uh, uh, the best way to do that is uh, use uh, culture and leisure activities uh, strategically, uh, because it, it's a way to uh, uh, making uh, uh, strong uh, uh, communities uh, and uh, bringing people together. Uh, so it's interest based, uh, uh, and, and, and that's a whole other way of working uh, with uh, mental health uh, and uh, uh, loneliness, etc., than you do in, a, for example, a school setting uh, where uh, you're forced to be. Uh, have, have, have you, uh, Peter, do you know of? of other cities, uh, have you been able to to uh, benchmark or connect with, or uh, other cities in Denmark or in Europe or elsewhere in the world where where they also have uh, these kind of policies, or is it has it been a, a bit you on your own, the city of Aarhus, uh, been trying out these things? Uh, I think there, there is uh, other countries uh, and, and also other, other cities that uh, that work with uh, this uh, agenda uh, and, and, and they do it in, in different uh, settings. Uh, some may work with uh, a cultural uh, and healthcare policy uh, as we do in Aarhus and, and, and other uh, is more project based. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's in in calling, uh, they work with uh, cultural and stress uh, release uh, uh, for uh, employees uh, in, in calling, uh, the municip municipality of calling. Uh, so, so it's uh, uh, an agenda that is rising, uh, but uh, not all have uh, a, a whole framework for how to work with it uh, yet. Uh, Great, thank, thank you, Peter. And I know that you're a, 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 a confirmed jazz musician also. So mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's also how you can both improvise and, and get your thoughts from these council meetings. <laughs> now we only have a, a, what, a bit around seven, eight minutes left. And I would like uh, Ken Arnold to uh, help me with, uh, there's not a lot of questions in the chat. Uh, so maybe, uh, Ken, you can just briefly explain uh, your background and then um, if you have some questions for any of the speakers today. I know some of uh, Nils had to leave, unfortunately, but the rest are there. Uh, and also, if you guys, any, any of the participants in this webinar have any questions, write them in the chat and we'll select the best ones. So, Ken, um, the Zoom is yours now. Great. Thanks so much. Uh, wonderful to be here with you all. Um, 
thanks for all of those inspiring talks. Um, so yeah, I'm based uh, half actually here in uh, in Copenhagen uh, with uh, yeah where Rasmus and, and Nils are uh, working for the university. Um, but I also have a, another half job at an organisation called Welcome in London, um, and it's uh, a very large. Uh, medical and health foundation and one of the three key strategic aims of welcome uh, along with looking at infectious diseases and the uh, health consequences of global heating is indeed mental health um, and uh, welcome is also a, a cultural organization so um, which is why we're interested in all the fantastic projects that um, that have been shared this morning uh, and I guess we're also interested in in how culture can bring research into these questions. So obviously, uh, arts culture has a huge direct personal impact on people's well-being. But we think there might be an interesting role for culture in helping explore what is a very complicated area of life, something that we know amazingly little about. So we work very closely with our mental health science colleagues and they're interested mm -hmm. in the role of culture uh, not just in helping people's mental health but also helping understand what we mean by mental health and I guess to, to, to come on to a couple of thoughts or questions uh, from this morning's presentation I guess one of the key things I'm really interested in is the similarity but also the difference of things that happen in different parts of the world you know, as you were saying, Rasmus, we've used Zoom to skip around the globe, and it seems like there's lots of things that are very common, but I guess I'm also really interested in what's different. What's different in Aarhus and in Hawaii? Uh, and I'm working uh, at a project at the moment called Mindscapes. I'll, I'll put a link uh, in the chat about it. And this is based in four cities, in Berlin, in New York, in Bengaluru, in, in India, and in Tokyo. And it, they're projects that are looking at mental health in an arts context, but we're building from the ground up. So this isn't the project that's the same in these four cities. It's completely different. And then I guess it shares some of the same questions. So I guess, you know, to turn that into question, I'm really interested in, in what's different as well as what's similar across what we've heard about this morning. And then I was keen to hear from Peter um, that historical comment, because it does seem to me as though a lot of what we think we're inventing for the first time actually turns out to be something that has deep roots in a number of different cultures. So I think history maybe can have a real role for us. Um, and then I guess my last thought is, you know, what we hear about this morning are a series of newish experimental projects. And the inclination is to say, well, surely we should work out what works and then we just expand it and do it everywhere and it becomes established. And I think that's a really interesting idea, but I also think it might be that carrying on inventing new ideas is just as powerful as thinking that there's one solution that we can spread out throughout the world. So almost my hope is that we carry on inventing new projects as well as making the ones that do work spread further. Plus, uh, the world is a, there are very different societies. I believe that in, uh, in Maui County, the, the public sector does not have a, a great role in, in this field. It's what you get, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a civil society that goes out and, and works in the field and not the, a city or a, a county or, or the state for that matter. But uh, we only have about two minutes left. And now I, there is one question for me actually in the chat about whether we're going to collect uh, all the all the great input from the speakers, including recording of this webinar. Yes, we are, and you can find it in thisis.cbnet.com. This is because this is the people uh, that make it up, mainly uh, startups, entrepreneurs, but also investors, uh, experts, and our, our dear national partners from around the world. Um, let's see if we have uh, just one other thing here. Um, uh, let's see here, who is this from? It's from Anthony, just a quick one. How am I further bring our product? I don't think we, we hardly have time for that. So um, I think we should wrap it up here. Nasia, right? Also, um, for, for my part, thank you to our speakers from, from Nils, David, Anne-Marie, Kadri, Pela, and Ken uh, for uh, contributing. I hope you will be with us uh, from now on and uh, 
until the earth freezes over, no, but at least until the summer where we have another uh, touch point with another uh, webinar doing bright, uh, where we also would talk about uh, mental health, uh, uh, maybe not specifically young, youth and children, but definitely arts and creativity and, and, uh, and health and arts and creativity and mental health. So uh, that is some, some of the areas that we are interested in. Nasia, you want to have a few, uh, the last words here? Thank you all for joining us today. It was a wonderful event, I think, and we should all stay connected with each other and hope to see you again.